Well, right, the idea that, that nature is orderly. Now, the Greeks believe that too. Many of the animist cultures and cultures in the East did not believe that, but the Greeks also believed in order. But there was a unique aspect of that belief in order in the Western Judeo-Christian mind, and that is that the order in nature that we now describe with the concept of the laws of nature, that order was a product of the divine mind, again, and that God was constantly upholding or sustaining those orderly processes that we observe, but also that the order could have been different uh, that because God was a free agent and he could have ordered the world lots of different ways. So the Greeks had the idea that the order in nature was the order that seemed most reasonable to us. So therefore, they thought they could sit and kind of do armchair philosophizing and figure it out. Yep. So, for example, they thought that the, the orbits of the planets uh, were in perfect circles because the circle was the perfect form of motion and mm -hmm. therefore uh, the heavens, which were the quintessential realm as they called it, must embody that perfect form of motion. Kepler came along later and said, well, we better look and see and make sure. And he found out that the orbits were actually elliptical. But that impulse to go and look and make sure was derivative of the idea that God could have ordered the universe in many different ways. I used to, when I was teaching, I used an example with my students. Um, got four different types of paintbrushes. They all have the same basic purpose, but each one is a little different for a slightly different application. So the Greeks thought if you could figure out the purpose of something, you could then deduce how it was made. If you knew the final cause, you could deduce all of Aristotle's other causes. But the scientists during the period of the scientific revolution thought, no, God could have made the world differently. Uh, Newton came up with something called an inverse square law, but it might have been an inverse cubed law to describe gravitational right. motion. So he had to go and look and see. And as Robert Boyle put it, uh, the, the great chemist during this period, he said, it's not the job of the natural philosopher, which is what they called scientists at the time, right. to deduce what God must have done. Instead, we must go and see what he in fact did do.